we expected a response, we, respect, we expected a, a tough response. But the very fact that uh, China essentially is practicing a blockade of Taiwan, the sort of step that it would do prior to an actual invasion, and that it's now simulating attacks on Taiwan using its military, I think is highly provocative. Uh, what we are talking about here, after all, is a visit of an American politician to Taiwan, and the Chinese are basically reacting as if we're uh, declaring you know, Taiwan independence. So it is over the top and very provocative. Is China it? obviously sees Taiwan as part of its territory. The Taiwanese people do not agree with that. The vast majority of Taiwanese people don't necessarily see themselves part of China, and they certainly do not want unification with China, especially after Hong Kong and Xinjiang. Uh, and so I think that you know, the visit by Nancy Pelosi sends a strong message of support to what, after all, is a Western liberal democracy of 24 million people uh, with a vibrant economy mm. that is an antithesis to everything that the Chinese Communist Party stands for. All right. Well, if what we're witnessing is, in fact, some sort of mission rehearsal for a future blockade of Taiwan... What are we learning about Chinese military capability and, and planning to do just that? I think what we're seeing is uh, an interesting uh, deployment of ships uh, and aircraft and the firing of missile systems uh, right around Taiwan. So that does suggest an envelopment strategy on the part of the PLA that in a future crisis they would seek to envelop and encircle Taiwan and potentially launch uh, attacks onto the eastern coast of Taiwan, which is something that traditionally we've discounted. So that's something we need to think about. And I think also, you know, the fact that they are very effectively using a combination of air and naval forces together with missile forces reinforces uh, the, 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 the perception that a future invasion of Taiwan will be a fast event. Firstly, you can guarantee we're gathering intelligence. Um, uh, there would be assets out there in the air uh, uh, on the surface of the ocean, uh, potentially underwater, gathering intelligence on Chinese military activities. There will be satellites overhead monitoring uh, SIGINT and ELINT, the sort of sensors and emissions uh, that, that are so important. And I think in a, in a future crisis, what you would see, uh, if the decision is made by the US government to support Taiwan, uh, then they would try to uh, raise the cost of any cross-straits invasion to unacceptable levels and hopefully de to deter that invasion. That's a big if. Is there anything about the developments of the last few days that brings greater clarity in your own mind as an analyst about so-called strategic ambiguity? Look, I think that there's a growing realisation in Washington, in Canberra, in Tokyo and in Seoul uh, that maybe strategic ambiguity is risky because it does suggest to Beijing that maybe there's an uncertainty as to whether we would in fact come to uh, defend Taiwan. It actually is starting to get to the point, given Beijing's aggressive behaviour in the region, not just about like, Taiwan but also South China Sea and other areas, that maybe it's time to actually declare a more... Um, uh, less ambiguous, less ambiguous yeah. approach that, that actually deters more effectively than something that essentially you know, gives the Chinese government reason to doubt US commitment and resolve. And where would that or indeed the events of the last few days leave Australia? It's uh, not by accident that it signed up to a joint statement with the US and with Japan. And of course, it's earned the ire of the Chinese Foreign Service here in Canberra. Uh, what, what, does it what does any of this tell you about Australia's choices under those scenarios you're talking about? Well, look, I think we do need to have a debate within the strategic policy community and more broadly about our response in the event that the Chinese launch an unprovoked uh, invasion across the Straits. Uh, we are, after all, talking about a country of 24 million people just like us mm. in a Western democracy. And do we have the ethical and moral uh, justification to abandon those people. But more importantly, I think even than that, our key relationship with the United States and with other partners in the Indo-Pacific would be uh, irretrievably damaged if we did not come to the assistance of the US. So, you know, I sympathise quite completely with Peter Dutton here. It's inconceivable that we would not assist the United States in this crisis. Mm, sensitive questions. You don't get the impression that Penny Wong's quite ready for that sort of public discussion yet. She's, of course, calling for restraint. But uh, we'll keep across it and no doubt talk to you uh, in the weeks and days ahead. Malcolm Davis, thanks for joining us today. Thank you.